My name's Guy Kesteburn and I've been professionally testing bikes for over 27 years and I put up my Dirty Reaver video which is playing over there, 200k gravel event in Keel the Forest and pretty soon a lot of you started asking about what bike I rode for that event. So I'm going to come over there, grab the camera and talk you through the detail changes I made and the kit choices for my Santa Cruz Stigmata, long-termer, and why I made them and how they worked out for the ride. So in terms of frame and most of the componentry, uh, which is SRAM Force Explorer, nothing much changed on the Stig. Uh, I was toying with the idea of putting a 1052 cassette with T-type transmission, because it does have that UDH rear hanger on the back. But, and we did actually have it in a box. Uh, this transmission is starting to look a little worn, certainly on the chainring teeth there. It's done some mileage. Uh, so that would have meant full chainring, chain and cassette and rear mech. I mean, the glory of uh, Axis Wireless is you don't have to do anything in terms of cabling. You know, it would have just been a case of linking up the shifters wirelessly and uh, it would have been good to go. However, it got to about 8 o'clock on the night before the event, and frankly, we were more concerned with getting a bit more food down our necks and uh, getting some rest than we were about starting to shift whole new transmissions across. So it stayed with a 40-tooth chaining on the front and 1044 on the back, and that proved absolutely spot on, to be honest. If you watch the video, you'll know there were a couple of climbs where I thought maybe I could have gone lower because we properly did it party pace. Uh, Al, who I was riding with, uh, was really, really suffering before even the event even started. So, uh, you know, we, we were properly uh, cruising up the climb. So it would have been nice to have another spinning gear. Probably could have kept in company a bit more of the time because I was having to stand occasionally in this gear. But as it is, absolutely zero issues. I did take a spare battery with me, but I didn't need it and didn't have a single shifting glitch all the time. The one thing that I have changed which you can't really see close up, but that sticker will give you a clue, is I'm now running an Enduro Bearings XD15 ceramic bottom bracket. And the dub one was okay, but it got to the point where it was starting to seize up regularly uh, pre-ride. And so it needed a few revs to get it creaking into action again. But that ceramic bearing, you know, maximum complement bearing, as with all the Enduro Bearings, was silky smooth and uh, durability of other bottom brackets I've been using through the year has been outstanding. So that's a big win in terms of uh, transmission efficiency. Also, lucky enough to pick up, actually literally on the morning of the event, the new Time ATAC XC12 pedals. This is the lightest uh, pedal in the time range, uh, full titanium kit on it. There's natty little gold springs on there as well and uh, those weigh in at 120 grams so actually the bike i should talk about that uh, before i forget the bike uh, as it stands with those pedals on was just under nine kilos which i think is pretty good but uh the other change i made from spec is i i took out the uh, wireless access dropper post in there chatting to people who'd ridden the event before they didn't see the need for a dropper post so that under behind the clamp there's a zip sl service course carbon post and that also you know it's just enough flex to keep it super comfy and uh yeah zero problems i mean I was descending fast enough. This bike is an incitement to go too fast on descents anyway, especially with that fork up front. So having a dropper post on as well, uh, didn't really feel I ever needed that. Uh, but and another thing is if you've got the post, it does have a suspension function if you'd run it slightly low, but with the drop with the dropper fully extended, it's actually really, really harsh. So it's a lot of extra weight, it's potential complexity and the rigid post did absolutely fine. I was running a new SDG Bell Air saddle with the cutout in it. It is designed as their longer distance sort of XC saddle with that cutout. Uh, but primarily, let's be honest, I chose it because I thought that plastic matched really well with the sidewalls on the new Panerasa tyres. 
So luckily, having not really ridden it before, it turned out absolutely fine over 200k. Had zero problems at all. Bit of bum butter on there, all glorious uh, down below. Uh, moving to the tyres, like I was talking about, these are the new Gravel King X1s. Only been out about a month, but I've been riding in the past few weeks, and I was very, very impressed by their rolling speed. Uh, ran it reversed on the back for a bit more braking traction in case I needed it, or in case it was slippery. Didn't need it in the end, but still a really, really quick tyre. Uh, certainly feel quicker than the Maxxis Rambler that come as standard on this bike, and also beautiful ride feel. Uh, I mean, I'd come off those challenge handmaids, which are meant to be super supple, but uh, these tyres matched it beautifully. Uh, started at 32 PSI, went up to about 40 PSI, and lost it. You can see, when I finished the event, there was a little bit of peaties just bubbling out there, and obviously there's a bit of you know, moisture there. Uh, so at some point, I've uh, either torn a knob slightly or clipped a rock. Not surprising, considering... Uh, this bike was hauling on the descents, uh, but the PE sealed it absolutely fine. It finished about 30 PSI, so a bit comfy on the end, but uh, all good in the end. And rather than reserves, which are very comfy, very tough rim, uh, because I knew it was going to be a relatively fast course. To be fair, it was rougher than I expected, uh, thanks to the Intel for the races you said it was going to be super smooth. It wasn't, but... Uh, these Zip 303 Firecrests, obviously more aero profile than the reserves, and they felt fantastic. Again, still a pretty comfy wheel, and they've uh, they've done really, really well for me. In I realised I actually looked up because I checked the weight beforehand because they're also uh, about 100 grams lighter than the reserve uh, 25 gravel wheels. So it was an aero and a lightweight win on the bike. Uh, but I didn't realise I've been running them since 2020. I actually first ran these uh, riding King Alfred's Way just after lockout had kind of lifted. So uh, although people have been asking how I've been getting on with the bearings, and I wasn't necessarily expecting them to... Uh, Still be running super smooth with the reputation Zip have had for previous setups, but actually these Cognition hubs proving great. Although, maybe, no, they're still running okay, aren't they? But I have got some Enduro bearings uh, for those wheels as well, so I'll probably do an upgrade. Uh, they've seen enough action now. They've proved a point, uh, so I'll probably get the Enduro bearings in there as an upgrade. Uh, what else do I need to talk about on the bike? Done saddle, done seat post, done pedals, done bottom bracket. Uh, glove box, super useful for extra storage. Had two lightweight inner tubes in there. And then that is actually the tail end of the survival blanket. Because the uh, Reva regulations stipulate you've got to take a survival blanket with you. Uh, so that was a nice easy stuff up inside the frame there. Uh, ran Petey's Fidlock bottles because they're just super easy to get on and off, but really, really secure, because I found gravel uh, tends to jettison more bottles even than mountain biking does. So it's great to know when you're doing 200K and you really, really need to know you've got your water sorted. And I saw a lot of lost bottles on the course. Uh, those Fidlocks gave me great peace of mind. On the back, somewhere under all this good old forestry uh, fire road, Fossilization, we have a Lazine light. I think it's the strip drive. The name's probably on this side, isn't it? Uh, strip drive, strip pro 300. Uh, really good, rock solid light, plenty bright enough. Again, didn't actually need it, but uh, that's part of the uh, mandatory kit list for the event. Uh, we, we rolled in, we took our time, we took 10 hours, uh, but we still didn't need lights. And then little 400 lumen light down on the fork leg there, which again, I really like these little design lights. They're pretty simple, but I like the fact, because you've just got that kind of watch strap band on them, you can fit them more or less anywhere. Uh, which brings us to the Rudy Forks. Again... To be honest, I didn't really have a choice because uh, I still haven't managed to source some uh, 
rigid stigmata forks out of Santa Cruz. I've tried in the UK, I've tried in the US, I still haven't got any spares. Uh, I will get them on on board at some point because I really want to feel how the bike rides without them. But, although they obviously add a chunk of weight over a conventional fork, these Rudy's were absolutely fantastic. Had zero issues with hand comfort, had zero issues uh, with... Uh, a lot of the rougher sections, and they just let you properly haul. I mean, this has got, you know, relaxed geometry, very long top tube, so it's it's naturally a very, very confident bike downhill, but having those Rudy's on the front really, really makes a difference to how hard and how nonchalantly you can kind of properly plough down the uh, gravel descents. And it's just just takes the edge off not only hand comfort, but also nerves about just blowing that front tire open or splitting it so uh yeah i didn't even use the lockout much uh, a couple of road climbs where i flicked the lockout on <coughs> but most of the time i left it open and didn't really disturb the piece at all now uh, that's me uh, dirty reba sticker on there quite handy for an at a glance uh view of where you are on the course although it took me for ages in fact it took me to i think it was feed three to realize that i thought the purple bits were the hills so i was expecting feed three to be at the top of a very big hill actually it's the other way up it's the black bits that are the hills but as you can see quite a pointy course i think it was about 3700 meters of climbing in the end uh, so good to get the bit of weight out of the stig because that frame with that glove box is relatively heavy it's a 1300 gram frame i mean well something like a specialized crux is 800 grams but that confidence the internal storage all worked really well for the event uh in terms of bar and cockpit uh has an eastern stem and bar on here which are purely on there for testing uh it's a carbon bar so it's a bit lighter than the zip uh explorer it comes with but to be honest I like the profile. It's got a bit of an aero profile on the top, uh, but not really a mad fan of it. A bit too stiff. Uh, got away with it this weekend, but certainly I noticed when I put these bars on, initially they were a lot stiffer, stiffer than the zips. So uh, I, for comfort, I should have stayed with the zips, to be honest. And also put a slightly longer stem on, but it was only like 10 mils, so I don't think it made a massive difference to aero. Uh, or handling but uh, again a bit more stability uh lasagne top tube bag is a strap on because uh, this stigma doesn't have any built-in mounts but don't even know if they still do this but a dead handy little caddy for you know gels in the bottom and then whatever i could scrounge from feed stations on top oh come on bell uh great for cycle paths quite useful for irritating people on long distance marathon rides uh k edge mount for the hammerhead uh i think i've left that upstairs charging and i'm not going to go sneaking around the bedroom at one o'clock in the morning when my wife's asleep just for the sake of your video but so imagine there's a hammerhead uh computer on there again nice simple net uh display on that Battery life uh, only just lasted the ride, so that's a bit of a downside, uh, but I really like the interfacing on it. And uh, on this bike, I've actually upgraded the force to uh, the spindle-mounted power meter in there, so I was running power data all the way around, which proved to be super useful uh, just for pacing myself and uh, on climbs and uh, not blowing up massively for once in an endurance event, which is very, very rare for me. If you're wondering about the different bar tape, it's just because I was testing two different bar tapes. Could I tell you the difference? No, not really. It's physic on that side. It's eastern on that side. They look the same. There don't mean no complaints about either, but you know, the whole idea of putting one on the other side, one on the other didn't really work in this case. Often works with shoes and gloves. It's a really good way to compare them because if you're riding the same thing over the same terrain at the same time, but yeah, no difference between these two bar tapes. Both worked fine. Uh, finally, that's my number board, as you can see, with my little timing chip on the end. And this bag is a little restrap uh, rab collaboration from the Struggle Borderlands gravel event uh, where I first raced this stig. 
uh, and it's just using uh, old point of sale dis displays from Rab in uh, little bar bags made up by Restrap. So that was a freebie for that event. And it was just on there for layers. Uh, once I ditched them, it's got a shake dry Gore-Tex waterproof in there. And then in terms of what I was wearing on the course, uh, it was Giro kit, unsurprisingly. Had the uh, new Cielo kit. Uh, I was running 100% uh, photochromic glasses. And then I used the Chrono long sleeve jersey and Chrono tights with sector shoes underneath uh, Spats faster overshoes because it was a minus one when we started and there were a few puddles about. So it was really good to have the protection on my feet and lower legs, but I didn't feel the need to go for the full heavyweight uh, gravel overshoe from Spats. Those fasters were pretty much spot on. And I used a Giro Cascade insulated vest for the start of the ride. Got rid of it about 40k, I guess, once uh, we'd warmed up. But that Chrono Pro jersey, it looks pretty simple, it's, but it's a really nice sort of Italian Roubaix fabric with a bit of DR, DWR water repellent on it. Uh, so it's just a classic three-pocket jersey, but the pockets are really expandable, so I could stuff all sorts of stuff in there. Yeah, got my scotch in there, egg in there and everything, fine. And all my talk bars and all my talk gels. And uh, as Zero have got a big sale on with all their kit, that's well worth a look if you're after a bargain. And then the final bit of stowage is... Petey's wrap underneath the saddle there, which had my Lazine tool in... Design pocket drive post, uh, PE's inflator and uh, spare axis battery and a plugger as well. So that was just there uh, for quick access if I needed it. And uh, yeah, just keeps everything clean, clean, waterproof and tucked in nicely out of the way. So that's the bike check done. If there's anything more you want to know, uh, I could have chosen. I mean, tyres are always a popular choice and I've got a huge range of tyres I could have run. But not only were these Panaraces really, really good mix of rolling speed, cornering confidence, and sort of all-round grip, but I think they look really sweet. The ride quality is particularly good. It's right up there with premium Schwalbe tyres. Uh, they're bang on size as well, which isn't the case with all 40mm tyres. And Panaraces support the event. So I figured, as I had the tyres, and I was really enjoying riding them. They seemed like a good choice, and uh, they definitely came through on that one. As did the bike overall, to be honest. I've kind of been a bit ambivalent about it in many ways, because it's heavier than the previous Stig I had, previous two Stigs I've had. The more relaxed geometry means it doesn't feel quite as racy and urgent, but I kind of equate it to like very early 29ers when they started first appearing. They felt a little bit sluggish, a little bit heavier, didn't really get them at first. And then you ride them in a group with other people and you realise the speed sustain of having that suspension, having that better uh, geometry on it for faster high-speed handling. I mean, if you've watched the uh, video, it's glitching at the moment, obviously, but if you've watched that video, you'll realise this gave me a serious advantage on every downhill section. So even though we were kind of soft pedalling up the climbs, We'd often see riders go out of sight, you know, up to the summit, and then minutes later we'd be back amongst them and passing them. So we were yo-yoing all day with minimal effort on the climbs, but maximum funnel of descent, which is a pretty good uh, performance characteristic for a bike for a big day out. So massive thanks to uh, everyone involved in putting this kit on the bike. Santa Cruz for lending me this bike as a long-term uh, SRAM for inviting me to the event uh, to ride their kit and you know share their food and their uh, chalet. Vocal events for the uh, rider of the Dirty Reaver and uh, all the excellent people we met out on course. Uh, sorry for jabbering on. Uh, Hope that didn't annoy you too much but really really great event really great vibe so if you can get a ticket for next year for the 65 the 130 or the 200 then i would thoroughly recommend it and the nice thing is you can decide how far you're going to do as you go on the course so uh, but i have to say to my massive surprise this bike meant that at no point did i not think about doing the 200k and that turned out to be a really, really rewarding and uh, highly amusing day out. 
Massive thanks to my Patreon subscribers who pledge on a monthly basis and they get early extended and uh, ad free edits as a thank you. Their names are scrolling up at the end of this video. Thanks to my regular channel supporters. Uh, they support me on the channel. So if you could support them uh, with your purchases when you're shopping, that would be a great way to repay them for their support of this channel. And if you could subscribe and no click for notifications, if you haven't already, that'd be great. And if you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up and tell your mates about it. Because hopefully, if you've enjoyed watching this far, then so will your pals. But for now, I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kest TV, talking about my Santa Cruz Stigmata Reva custom build.